Hey everyone, welcome back for another Unraid video. Today we're going to take a look at a basic install and setup for Requester. It's one of the newest members of the R family, and it's a Discord chatbot used to simplify user requests for media in Sonar and Radar. It can also be used through Ombi and now with Overseer support. If it sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around and let's get started. Alright, if you're watching this video, I'll assume you already have a basic Discord server set up and ready to use. You might want to go ahead and get that queued up for later on in the video, but for now we're going to switch over to community applications on our Unraid server and do a search for Requester. Now I'm definitely a fan of Linux servers containers, but I actually found a problem with their Requester container during the making of this video. And I also really like Hoshio's container, so I'm going to go ahead and download that container and use the default tag. There's not a lot to configure here, so once you get there, go ahead and just hit apply and pull that container down. And the developers for Requester have actually made this video pretty easy for me. There are some instructions that they have written out on their wiki page for GitHub, and I'll go ahead and include those instructions and a link down below in the description in case anybody needs those as well. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the Docker tab. Go ahead and click the icon there and open up the web UI. Now here on this page um, there is no password recovery. So you want to make sure that you make a note, save it in a password keeper or something of your username and password. Um, and also you'll want to make note uh, later on if you end up installing more than one instance of Requester like I have and I'll show you later on in the video. For each port number that you assign Requester to, you'll have a different login name. So for example, I'm using uh, this instance on port 4545. So I'll have uh, test one and password one for this one. Then I may want to use port 4546 and then that username would be test two and password two. They'll have different login names for each one. So that's something to keep in mind. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and create test one. And my password here is gonna be password one. Password one. And I'm not gonna hit remember me just to make it easier for now. And then I'll hit create account. And before we start setting up everything on sonar and radar, I'm gonna go ahead and get the Discord bot set up because if we can't get that part working, then the rest is all for naught. So let's switch over to the Discord developer portal. Now on my screen, I've gone ahead and opened these two tabs next to each other. You might find during your installation that this makes it a little easier for copying and pasting information back and forth. So here on the Discord developer portal, I'm going to go ahead and sign in real quick. And now that we're here, the first thing to do is hit new application. And for this application name, I'm just going to call it requester. Create. Now the application ID. We want to go ahead and copy that and paste that over here into on the main page where it says the client ID, command V on the keyboard. Then back on the Discord page, we want to go to bot, add a bot, yes, do it. And this is going to be the name right here that shows up in your Discord server. So you can call this whatever you want to. And if you scroll down, You'll want to enable these two intents right here. This will allow us to enable notifications later on. You'll see this right here in the bottom left in the orange. So let's save those changes. Now we want to copy the bot token. So click to reveal the token. Highlight that. Command C there. Back over here on the chat client, we're going to do Command V there. And let's scroll down 
and let's test our settings. Specified settings are valid. Excellent. So let's scroll down and save those changes. Now the next thing to make sure is that you do have an active Discord server that you can invite the bot to. So let's go ahead and hit that copy invite link right there. And we're gonna paste that into a new tab. So I'm gonna select a server to add that to. That's my server there, hit continue. And here are the permissions that you can change. Feel free to edit these as you see fit. I'm just gonna leave them as default and hit authorize. Now we can close that window. Now if I open up my Discord channel, I can see on my server that there's their requester bot right there. Now if you happen to open up your channel or your server and you notice that the Discord bot is not there, go into your settings and edit the channel and make sure that you change the channel permissions from private channel to public channel and then run through the copy invite link process again and then you'll notice that the requester bot pops up. You can also change your bot status from playing help by editing this message right here to whatever you want. So it can say playing media. Then scroll down, save those changes. Then you'll see the status update right there. Now let's go ahead and go back to full screen on our chat client and get our sonar and radar instances set up. So let's go ahead and click on our TV shows tab. And download client is gonna be sonar. And then we need to get our API key from our sonar tab. So I'm gonna copy that here, come back to the requester tab and enter the API key, command V. Now also keep in mind it does have a version number for you to use, two or three. If you'll notice on this one, I'm using version three for sonar. Enter the host name or IP. Even if you're on the same server, I still like to go ahead and enter the actual IP address. So for me, that's 192.168.1.122. I'm using the default radar port and I'm not using a reverse proxy for this instance so I'm just going to leave the base URL alone. And we can go ahead and scroll down to the TV show settings. Let's go ahead and hit load and we can see my media path there. Should be the only one. Yeah. Profile. Let's hit load there. Any and then you can select whatever the default profile is that you'd like to use. So I'm just going to do 720, 1080. I don't have any tags that I'm going to use. Uh, language, I'm going to go ahead and leave that set to English. Use season folders. And I don't have any anime settings. I'm not an anime guy myself, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave those as default. Feel free to adjust these settings for the permissions over here on the bottom left. Um, automatically monitor new TV shows, search for episodes when a request is made. You almost always want to leave this one enabled, otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose. But let's test our settings real quick. Settings are valid. And here is one of the most important parts, our command. So the way requester works is to start, you begin by typing an exclamation point and then whatever command you have set right here. So maybe you just leave it as TV, maybe you change it as TV regular. Um, but then in the Discord server, you'll end up having to type this command every time you want to make a request. So sometimes less is more. So I'm just gonna leave that as TV. The restrictions, you can force all seasons or force a single season. I don't leave any restrictions, so I'm just gonna save those changes. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing for our movies. We're using radar. Version 3, let's copy the API key. Paste that in, using the default port. Poster IP is 192.168.1.122. Load our paths, movie, profile. Let's set that to 720.1080. Uh, announced, we can leave that the same. And everything else, I'm just going to leave the same. Again, the command here is movie. Now, if you later on decide to run a 4K requester instance, you might want to change this to something like 4K. <laughs> uh, and you can do the same thing for sonar if you have a separate library for your sonar paths, for your 4K sonar paths. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave that as save changes. Now, you'll notice real quick under the download clients, there's an option for Overseer and Ombi. Uh, now, me personally, I don't have a lot of uh, people making requests on my Plex account. So, honestly, it's kind of a just an extra step that all of these things have to go through by adding Ombi or Overseer on there. It's just an extra point of failure. So, unless you really need to see who is requesting what, and for some reason you're not able to go through your Discord chat to see who's done what, um, then in my opinion, it's better to just go straight from requester to radar or sonar. Now let's run through some of the settings. If you're running a reverse proxy, um, which I don't think you'll need to do, but you might, um, here's where you can enter the base URL there, or if you need to change the port number, Feel free to do that here also. Now let's go back up to the chat clients tab and take a look at some of the other settings that we have available in there. As I showed before, the status message will, will change the status for the bot in Discord. But if you leave this as help, exclamation mark help, then your users can know if they forget what any of the commands are, all they have to do is type that in and the bot will display the syntax for the commands to download or to make requests. Uh, the notifications, uh, what this is, is for successful download completion. Um, so if you request a movie and then the movie becomes available, you'll get a private message from the bot letting you know that it's ready. So you can do that, or you can disable it, or you can just have it uh, displayed publicly in the channel. What this does right here, automatically notify users of downloaded content when they make requests. If they make a request for something that's already in the library, then the bot can let them know that it's already there. Uh, if you disable this, then that will disable them, letting them know that the, that the media is already in the library. And a few commands here under miscellaneous. They're pretty self-explanatory. If somebody does mistype the command, um, then they can get the help command response in a private message. Actually, I tend to leave this disabled. That way when users make a mistake, they can see what the correct syntax is, and then other users can benefit from that also. And then of course the command prefix down here, you do have the ability to change that. You can do question mark or two exclamations or however you want to set it. And that's really all there is to it. Once we get that done, we can switch back over to our Discord and see how it's working. So here on my Discord server, I'm going to type exclamation point TV and I'm just going to try Dexter. And then we should get a, a display of search results. And in this case, I would prefer number one, and it'll give you instructions on how to download things. But essentially, you're just, at this point, selecting one of the search results that the bot gives you. So exclamation point, I want the option number one right here. So number one, enter. For all seasons, I'll type exclamation point zero. And then there's a confirmation download arrow right there. Hit that, 
and then that'll go all the way through to our sonar instance. So just to double check that it's coming, let's go over to our sonar, then let's click on series, and there it is. Now for this particular show, um, I don't have any indexers or download clients or anything set up here, so I'm not actually downloading anything. Uh, I'm just doing this for information purposes only to show you how to load a show from the requester bot into a sonar or radar. And uh, just to give you one last quick example here for movies, it would just be something like exclamation point movie. And then you can see there that it tells you exactly what the syntax should be for the command. So exclamation point movie Iron Man. This is there's no special quotes that you have to use for multiple words or anything like that. You just simply type however many words it is for the title of the show or movie after the command and hit enter. And then it'll give you the, the, the list of results for you to choose from. And then to cancel, you just type exclamation point, cancel. And one last thing just to show you what it looks like to have multiple requester instances on the same server. You can see right here my main requester is mapped to an external port of 4546 and the app data folder is just the basic default requester with the extra R. Then I've got a requester kids library and it's mapped to port 4545 and it has a, a unique app data folder and then my 4K library is mapped to port 4547 and it's in app data slash requester 4K. To change the necessary ports and folders when you're installing, all you have to do is change this port number right here, change the name of the container, change the name of the folder for the app data, and then go to your advanced view and be sure you change the web UI to match the port that you map down here. And one last reminder to keep track of those logins. They can all be the same login or they can be different logins, but each instance will have its own separate login and there is no password recovery. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Requester, in my opinion, is a great utility to host for Discord users that share media libraries. I hope you found this video helpful. I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who help keep the disc spinning. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, have a great day.